We now move on to item 1.06, briefing and request for approval for the agricultural deer cooperator per permit, um, limited off season deer hunting. And we have a letter of support request and we have um, Mr. Russell. Schlegel. Schlegel here to speak to the commissioners. Commissioners, if I may just for the purpose of a little bit of background, you'll see in your board docs that there's an operational plan components from the Department of Natural Resources. One of the components um, or one of the requirements of the permit that Mr. Schlegel is requesting is that the county attorney's office provide a letter of support. And so that's why we've asked Mr. Schlegel to come here today to um, address you all because the county attorney's office has not, at least to our knowledge, ever received a request like this before. Um, the previous county attorney reached out to the Charles County Sheriff's Office and you'll see a letter in your board docs from the Charles County Sheriff's Office indicating that they can't say with any degree of certainty whether or not this can be operated safely. And so before that letter is written by the county attorney, we wanted the commissioners to actually weigh in and instruct on whether or not that letter should be forwarded. So Mr. Schlegel's here, he's provided a lot of information for you all in your board docs. You see a number of pictures and other documents. Mm -hmm. So we'd ask you to provide any comments you'd like to share. I've got a written statement I'd like to read to the commissioners and then I can address any specific questions um, of the plan in general and of the documents that we forwarded. I'd like to thank the commissioners for providing this opportunity to speak with you this morning. Uh, my name is Russell Slegel. I live at 12850 Slegel Road. I'm the owner manager, manager of a fruit and vegetable farm that has been in Charles County for 108 years now and supports four families. Many, many citizens of Charles County visit our farm throughout the season to purchase food that they serve their families. Additionally, our produce is served in local restaurants, offered for sale at Giant Food, served in the lunch line at Anne Arundel County Public Schools, and has donated to several local churches for their feeding, the Hungry Missions. I'm also proud to say that our strawberries were served on the Obama, Obama dinner table when they lived on Pennsylvania Avenue. Farmers do important and necessary work. My work, my livelihood, the sustainability of my farm is being threatened by the overwhelming deer population in northern Charles County. We have seen their numbers increase year after year and after trying all conventional methods to reduce their number and subsequent damage I'm at a breaking point. They not only eat everything that they can get into, but by merely walking through a field, their feces renders any produce growing near their path unsellable in accordance with our USDA food safety certification. I cannot financially sustain many more seasons with such heavy losses. I know that you have received the pictures of damage, third party proof of the actual losses. Additionally, I've sent you the specifics of the agricultural cooperator permit and the requirements that I have had to meet. I have passed the written exam. I have proved my proficiency with firearms. I have talked with them about the planned operation and gathered signatures of my neighbors close to us and those right on Sluggle Road of their support. This meeting today is my last step in a long process that started in July and must be completed in the next nine days. Part of the stipulation is that I needed permission from the county attorney I need a letter from her that states specifically that she is in agreement with nighttime shooting of a rifle for the purpose of this operation. After requesting a letter from her on September 13, 2018, Ms. Weaver in turn notified Sheriff Barry, Barry as well as the county commissioners. Sheriff Barry, Barry replied to her that he could not say with any degree of certainty this operation could be conducted in a safe manner. I do understand that. It's his job to think about all of the citizens of Charles County, and he doesn't know me or the proposed site of the operation. I have not spoken with him personally, and he has not conducted a site visit. However, DNR has put major safeguards in all aspects of this operation. The law was passed in the last legislative session to allow this. This method of deer reduction is being used in other states and counties of Maryland. This will become another tool for us to use to control the deer damage. We will continue to use fencing and scare tactics in daylight harvesting, and we will search for avenues to donate the meat to homeless shelters or organizations that feed them. 
There are hundreds of deer in close proximity to our farm. Every week, there are new carcasses on Madam Woman Beantown Road where people have hit them. They cause damage to cars and sometimes personal injury. This is not a problem that we can solve in one month or even one year, but we have to be able to start reducing the population. The deer population doubles every three years, if not then. I fully understand that my sons and I farm on the urban fringe. We go to great lengths to be good neighbors to the houses near us. We don't run tractors at night. We don't spray anything on our fields that could be harmful to them. We would not do anything that put them in danger. For this operation, we have chosen an area of the farm that is the farthest away from the houses. We will be shooting from six feet in the air, and the trajectory will be at a downward angle. The backdrop is acres of woods, no houses. Using mathematical theory, the bullet will strike the ground in less than 32 yards if there is a total miss or the bullet passes through the target. This area is far safer than the required safety zones necessary to comply with the DNR rules. Every time we conduct an operation, which can only take place in February and March, the DNR offices must be notified as well as local law enforcement. This is not a covert operation. We have been and will continue to be very transparent. I want to finish up by saying that I'm not doing this because I enjoy hunting. I do not. I do not participate in sport hunting. This is what's necessary to solve the deer problem that are on their way to making farming financially unsustainable on Slegel Road. If you have any specifics uh, about the plan, I'd be more than happy to answer them. In subsequent conversation yesterday with Paul Pedito, who's the Director of Wildlife Management for DNR. At that time, he told me that they would be willing to accept and move forward with the letter from the county attorney. They would like to have, to have Sheriff Barry on board. Uh, they've never encountered this before. So in 23 counties in Maryland, this is the only uh, chief law enforcement officer that has ever had a problem. They would like all parties to be on board. Um, his words to avoid a situation of aggressive and nuisance enforcement. Um, and they said that he, they would issue the permit on the county's attorneys. He's also supplied me with his cell phone number that if anybody has questions or even Sheriff Barry would like to talk to him further, that they can call and talk to him. Commissioners, any questions? I do. As, so night shooting as opposed to day shooting, can you tell me why you chose the night shooting? In all honesty, we've had deer management permits with DNR since 1993 is when the problem has started. Each year it's gotten consistently worse. If you refer to some of the uh, documents that we supplied, uh, especially what came out of RCS and soybean claims, you'll notice that every year they're progressively worse. Deer are an extremely adaptive animal. There's more deer living in Charles County now than there were in colonial times. The urban landscape, the small patches of woods provide ideal cover for them along with being so adaptive, nocturnal. The deer on our farm have went totally nocturnal. We never see a deer during the middle of the day. You may catch one in that last 15 or 20 minutes of daylight, but they've went totally nocturnal. With uh, uh, trail cameras, we'll set trail cameras, and you'll see that nothing happens during the course of the day, but every night you'll have four or five groups 10 at a time coming and feeding. So it's, it's, it's not the cure-all, it's just another tool and a tool to try to manage this ongoing problem. What's your closest surrounding of neighborhood? What's the surrounding neighborhood? Are you in a, a area where there are a lot of homes or? We live right next to Pinefield. The farm is next to Pinefield. Next to Pinefield? The, there is a map I don't know how to get to it. Mm -hmm. Is 
there a way you can bring that map yes, up? Yes, there is. Commissioners, if you look under um, one, two, three, your third row, it's stated maps. There's two maps that Mr. Schlegel's provided. I'm going to show you. Okay, if you look at the top of the map, the whole northern edge of our farm borders fine trees. So which map? We have map, map, map one and two. Okay. We're on map, map one. one. Okay. Um, we totally comprise about 300 acres at this site, a little over. Mm -hmm. um, the property, it stretches from Madeline Beantown Road, across the road from White Oak, to St. Peter's Church Road. The road on the far right-hand side is St. Peter's Church Road. The dark line that lays out the property, if you come to the inset line, that is a 150-yard line, which is the um, safety zone uh, by law that DNR requires, where there can be no discharge of a firearm within that safety zone. So if you look in the lower part, there are two red dots. Those red dots, based on our observations uh, of deer movement, will provide the greatest chance of success as well as safety. You'll notice the arrows. The arrows will be the direction that we'll be shooting. Again, we'll be shooting from a six-foot elevated platform so that the bullet, from the time that it starts, it will be going on a downward trajectory. Uh, Mr. Schlegel, yes. I'm sorry. Um, you're shooting totally away from the house completely. Most definitely. And, and just to let the board know, you only need 10 acres to hunt on in, 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 right. in Charles County. You have 10 acres, you can hunt anywhere. Um, he's, I think he's going by the guidelines, shooting away from it through the woods. Up in air, which makes sense, elevated, and you're using night vision scopes. I'm, I'm correct, right? Correct. We'll use so you'll be able to see exactly yeah. what you're hitting. And how long do you propose to do this uh, shooting? The operation can only take place during the months of February and March. Now, I, I don't, I doubt very seriously if we're going to be conducting operations every night. It'll be based on weather and the patterns that the deer are moving at that time. Only uh, female does can be um, harvested because that's what you need to harvest to adequately manage the problem in, in long term. All the meat has to be used. There can be no wanton waste. Mm -hmm. We will donate the meat to homeless shelters. It'll move through with Chuck's Butcher Shop in Bryan's Road, and from there he works with homeless shelters to move it through. Um, if you look at map two, it's a little bit more of an expanded view. You can see the red dots. The red dots are the proposed sites. The arrow denotes the direction of travel of the bullet. And you'll see where I've written woods. All you have is woods, chainy gravel pits. The land is going at a slight upward trajectory. And you don't have any houses until you get to the corner of Poplar Hill Road and Battle and Beantown Road. That's probably a mile and a half nothing but woods. Commissioners, you can click, right click to rotate your view. I'm sorry, when it was uploaded, it skewed it. Also, if I may, also Captain Gimler is here with the Charles County Sheriff's Office if you have any questions for the Sheriff's Office. Oh. Uh, Commissioner Stewart had a, a question. Good morning. Good morning. 
Um, as, as you know, and I'll just say this, and just to make sure everyone understands, that this is in my district, it's District 3. Um, you know, I know your farm very well. Um, I have a couple of concerns, and number one, I read the letter from the Sheriff's Office, and the one thing that popped out to me was the type of um, firearm that you'll be using. Um, so my first question is, is there opportunity to use something other than the high-powered um, rifle? And my second concern is with the plan, I think it's very important that we give notice to the community of what would be occurring, and I think that piece is missing. I think um, a public notice and um, even maybe a public meeting should be had to make sure that the community is aware of this. I do appreciate you getting signatures, and I did review the signatures regarding folks that were in support of approving your request. Um, but also, I think it's important to notice that on your signature list, you have um, neighborhoods that are not connected, such as Hampshire, Acton Village. Um, there is um, someone from the Was um, Washington, D.C. There's someone from Fair Ch Fair Falls Church, Virginia. And I do appreciate your support that you have in the community. But I think we need to, we should do, um, if this is approved, it, the plan should also include a public meeting or, and public notification of when it's occurring. And so those are my two major concerns. Again, the type of firearm that's being used, and number two, um, having a clear expectations and requirements of notifying the public. The choice of the firearm was based on accuracy mm -hmm. and distance. Um, the next way you would go would be a shotgun. A uh, shotgun will not be as accurate. Uh, the proficiency for the rifle was nine out of 10 shots in a two inch circle, the length of a football field, 100 yards. A shotgun was nine out of 10, I think at 50 yards, half the distance in a four inch circle. Shotguns are not as accurate, nor are they as lethal. Right. Uh, as far as a public hearing, I visited all neighbors on Slagle Road as required by the operational plan documents as required by the state legislature. I afforded through the customers that came through our farm stand mm -hmm. the opportunity to ask any and all questions. I do not see the necessity to have a public hearing to decide whether I can conduct an already approved legal operation on my own property. So let me make, make a, we, a correction. I didn't say a public hearing. I don't believe I said that. A public meeting, it's a, di it's a difference. Um, so in my stating a public meeting and public notification, it's, if it's, it is approved at this level, I'm saying that it should be included, that we do our due diligence to inform the community that it's going to occur. I'm not saying that based on state law, based on the procedure that is, that's needed, I'm not suggesting that if this board decides to support your request, that then you go out and hold a public hearing for approval. My issue is if this board sees fit to approve this, my request would be that a public meeting is had and or public notification via um, um, website, the local newspaper, just so folks can't come back and say, we didn't know about this. We need to inform the public if, it's improved, if, it, if it is approved. I think learning from past experiences if it is approved, then that's, that, that's the end to that. But we do have a responsibility to just notify the public. So 
the majority of what I'm saying about the public notice is for my colleagues um, to, so they understand my position. So if they support this, they understand that would be my request to make sure the county does what we can to, if it's approved, to support the, the efforts, but just making sure that we inform the residents. Um, I do have another question. I didn't see it in your documentation. It may not be required by the state, um, but I'm sure you've given this some thought. If this is approved, who would actually be allowed to do this? Would it be just the homeowner? I noticed it said homeowner, leasee, or designee. Like, who do you know? Would you hire someone to come in and do it? Or would this be strictly the responsibility of the owners or, or the, um, the owners of the property yourself? This plan um, differs mm -hmm. from a regular crop damage permit, where the regular crop damage permit, the farmer can have designated shooters. Um, this plan is a site specific <coughs> plan. It can only take place where DNR has said it can take place. Your shooters are specifically named shooters. My three shooters is myself and two of my sons. Um, we each had to undergo the background check by DNR. We each had to pass the written test with a score of 80 and above, which is based on uh, deer eco 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 ecology and uh, hunter safety and awareness of the laws in the state of Maryland concerning hunting, as well as um, uh, you know, uh, the background prof and the proficiency. So. Each person, you, uh, uh, you just don't get anybody off the street. And it's specific to the area of operation. There are other plans which are more of a commercial-based plan, whereas they can move from site to site within the county. Um, and this has been out there for probably close to 20 years. It's mm -hmm. just in the last year that they moved it to an agricultural based permit, site specific, because if you have to pay someone to do this, it's very, very expensive because of the liability issues involved and because of the training and the, the uh, things that you go through. Even the deer, even the deer themselves will probably pay $70 to have each one of those deer processed out to donate to the, the homeless shelters, but that's part of the program. And I, uh, you know, public notification, I, I don't know. I, I, because of the business we're in, we rely heavily on uh, direct to consumer sales, okay? Um, like I said before, I'm not a sport hunter. I, I wish they'd leave me alone, and I'd leave them alone. The that's, deer. That's, that's not the way it exists right now. Uh, and I, I, you know, I want to continue to farm. I want to continue to live in Charles County. I want to farm. I've got three sons involved in day-to-day -day operations. They're my next generation. I'm very proud of the fact that we've operated for 108 years, and I hope I can go another 30 and they can take it the rest of the way and that my grandchildren can operate it for 200 years. Right. Um, these, these operations, they are being conducted. They're being conducted in Prince George's County, in Montgomery County, in Howard County. I think we've got some counties there that are a whole lot more urban density and populated than what we are. You know, uh, we take the best of Charles County. We've, we've got places to shop and places to go work and we've got open land and we've got to be able we've got to be able to address all concerns right i do appreciate it. you know me personally i have my family we've um, been been to your farm for many years um, i would share with my colleagues that if this is approved today i think that the letter that comes out of the county attorney's office 
should specifically address what he shared about who would be allowed to do the um, shooting. Um, I've taken the um, Hunter's Maryland State License um, test, and I know the rigorous, um, at least the online portion, the rigorous exam. And so I, I trust that you and your sons are able and efficient to do this in a safe manner. Um, but again, I guess at this point, my three requests, and this is for my colleagues, and just to make sure it's clear, that I do believe a public uh, meeting to make sure questions are answered by the public. And I can tell you, I would offer to um, host that um, in the area so we can put out a notice and invite people to come in just to ask a question. It's not asking for permission if this board sees fit to approve this. But I've learned from many issues that if we get ahead of it and answer any questions that the public may have, it will solve a lot of problems in the end. Um, the second request would be um, to make sure that in a letter it is clear that you and your sons who have been properly trained and licensed by the state of Maryland would have the ability to do this. Um, so those would, those would be, uh, my, um, those are the two things that I would definitely want to include in the letter. I mean, excuse me, that would be the one thing to include in the letter. And if this board seat fit to have public notice, um, other than just in the newspaper or social media, if you wanted a face-to-face -face meeting, I'm offering you my services to just to put out the notice to see if we can, um, if we had any questions or concerns that just could be addressed. I don't know if time's going to permit that. To be quite honest with you, I need a, a determination. If it's she's not, uh, Mr. Slago, she's she's not offering that. What she's she's making it clear that, you know, if it's the board's will, we will actually move forward. It that will be the motion, you know, to move forward. Mm -hmm. But what she's suggesting is, you know. Um, subsequent to that, that there be some type of notice given to the public, which I wholeheartedly agree with. I, just from my experiences as a commissioner, it's always better to give more notice than less notice. Mm -hmm. you know, how, how, how about this? We, I make a motion to approve with public notice of what times the shooting will be done and what it's right, for. Question. I had a question about the times, the hours of operation. And the reason I mentioned that is because when you start shooting at night, and I'm surrounded by woods, and, and we have uh, uh, hunters behind my home that's shooting, that, that noise of shooting kind of startles you in, in, at nighttime with surrounding, anyone surrounding hearing gunshots is immediately going to kind of wake you up and, and figure out what's going on around you. So I, I kind of agree. I was wondering your hours of operation. What, what time are you planning on um, uh, doing these time? And I know it's nighttime, but what, how many hours and what hours of the night? The, it's almost not like you can fix a time on it, if, if this makes okay. sense. Um, you're you're, you're going to get like one opportunity in the course of a night, probably, uh -huh. on, on a good night. So. It could happen at 45 minutes in the dark. Your trial cameras might tell you that your activity is going to happen at 1 o'clock. There's an extensive, that's the, with the nine days. In nine days, I have to file my operational plan with DNR. What I was thinking of just posting the times that you will be shooting for right, what, right. month to month. You know what I mean? That, okay. And just well, let people the, know that. The, the you, plan, when we, when we file the plan, the plan will be open for February and March. Right. We'll, we will prob we'll probably file from a half hour after sun down okay. to a half hour before sun up okay. as the window of operation. Again, we're not going to be out there all night long. We're not going to be out there every night. Well, that's between rain and wind and weather and you, know, you never know what you're going to yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I understood. And but there's a specified amount that we have to specify that we, we want to harvest, right. be using actual numbers. Once we achieve those numbers, it's, it's over. We've, we've, we've finished. 
within that time frame, you, there's a specific amount within that time frame that you're going to harvest. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Can I second Commissioner Rucci's motion on the floor and then open up for discussion? With, Commissioner President? With the notice component, correct? That's his so, motion. And then yeah, with I the notice of what time they will be shooting from what month to what month that this could occur and explain to them what it is. I don't think we're ready for a motion because I have another, there's another a person that I would like to come out. The, um, the officer. The, sheriff, yeah. the representative from the sheriff's office. Absolutely. May I speak, may I, may I speak for the? Go ahead. Thank you for coming out, Mr. Schlegel. When did you start this process? July. Okay. So July is when this process started for you to, to, to move forward with this. I, I'm looking through the, the signatures, and yes, there are some folks from outside of um, the neighborhood, but there's a lot from around Pinefield and White Oak. Um, I'm very familiar with your farm. I've been out, visited your farm, walked your farm understand what you're dealing with. Um, it's a tremendous economic impact. Um, my concern isn't necessarily with, with you, it's more with the efficiency of government and the fact that you started in July with this process and have done the legwork of going out and looking and talking to your neighbors about this issue. So based on some of the letters we did receive, my personal experience, with um, farming and what you're dealing with and the, knowing the timeline. Um, I, I feel you've, you've done the necessary steps to, to notify the public. Now, I, I am um, in agreement that we should notify the public when you do it and offer meetings after we, after we uh, if it, the, so the will is of this board to approve it, we should notify them that we're doing it. Um, but I believe that we need to, as government, we need to be efficient. And if you start this process in July, and you have nine days, it's gonna devastate some of your product that's gonna be up for sale, am I correct, uh, moving correct. forward? Um, so I would just uh, encourage my colleagues to understand that time is of the es essence on this, and I, I'm fully aware of the, uh, the safety, and I'm as well concerned with the safety of the residents around the area, but I commend the, um, Mr. Schlegel for taking the initiative to go out and, and talk to them. Um, so that's kind of where I stand with it that, uh, from me. And I understand the rifle issue that um, in order to be efficient and effective that you need to use the rifle. Um, and I understand that the, the trajectory of what you're talking about. I also understand where the sheriff's coming from, um, from what he's saying. But I, I had the opportunity to come out and visit your farm and boots on the ground to see what you're dealing with. And uh, I feel this is appropriate. So I'll defer back to the rest of my commissioners. I guess before we uh, move forward with the decision, I, I did want uh, the representative from the sheriff's office to um, mm -hmm. address this issue. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Would you please state your name, please, for the record? I'm Captain Dan Gimler with the Charles County Sheriff's Office. Okay, thank you. I do have a question, but before I ask my question, did you have anything that you would like to share with us first? Or do you want me to just go to my question? Uh, you can just defer to the letter from the sheriff. Okay. So, uh, Commissioner Coates brought up an issue that made me want to ask you a question. If this board um, supports this and approves this today, and we do move with public notice, not everyone is going to know. What does the sheriff, what would the sheriff's office need? How could we support you? Because I know personally, if I'm in my house at one, two, three o'clock in the morning and I hear gunfire or if I hear shots, I'm gonna call your office. Is there anything, and it may not be anything you need, but would you say that the sheriff's office um, would need anything to make sure that you're handling the calls correctly? Like, I'm thinking that the sheriff's office, we need to make sure that your office is aware so when you're getting calls, when you do send out people, they understand what's going on in the area. Do you need anything or? Um, it, it would be beneficial if we knew there was an operation in place. I don't think it's going to change um, our response. If we get a, a report of sound of gunshots, we're still going to send officers out to 
investigate because at one o'clock in the morning when that shot goes off, people aren't going to be able to tell exactly where it's coming from or anything else. So we can't just sit in the office and say, oh, it's just them doing a right. operation. We still have to come out and see what we can find. I've okay. got a quick question. Thank you. Mr. Schlegel, have you ever thought of silencers at night? Can you please, can you please come to the mic? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm just trying to try to solve a problem here. Um, at present, we're uh, going through the ATF background check. Um, it's anywhere from a um, six to a nine month yeah. process. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we, we, we're, we are in the process and ideally, um, I don't know, I, I doubt if we're going to get them this year. Yeah, that would solve the problem for next year, though. In yeah. subsequent years, we would, we would use uh, suppressors. Yes. Is there any way when he goes out on a thing, if he just called and left a note at the front desk, say we'll be shooting at the Slagle Farm tonight, would that help anything? It would give us a little bit of information so yeah. that we're not, you know. I got you. Can we set something like that up? Where, where, that when is, you're, when that you, is a requirement of the plan and it's so you would call the sheriff's department say the shagel farm will be shooting you tonight notify, uh dnr southern region dispatch as well as the sheriff's department to say you know this is russell slegel we're conducting an operation tonight also in um how do i want to say by accepting the permit from dnr we agree to allow our site and our farm to be open at any time for inspection by DNR as well as local law enforcement to make sure that all laws are being maintained, to make sure that the operational plan is being followed. Whatever is spelled out in the operational plan has to be followed. If you say that you're shooting from the bed of a truck, using the hood and the sandbag for your uh, support and DNR would happen to come out and you were on the ground and you didn't have on the ground in your operational plan, you'd be in violation of your plan and you would, you would, you could be, you would be fined. You would lose your permit. You would be fined. Once you get fined and have a problem with DNR, I risk losing all my crop damage permits, as well as the right to 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 exercise uh, any type of crop damage eradication in the state in the state of Maryland. So okay. it's just you just don't do what you want to do. Yeah. You do what you say you're going to do to follow to follow through. Thank you, Mr. Slagle. Let's get back to the sheriff. I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt. I just want to ask that question while you were. I think. Um, Commissioner Stewart had uh, an questions. additional question. I do too. Um, Commissioner Coates, and then I kind of wanted to follow up because I, you know, I, I think we've heard sufficient um, discussion on all sides of this. But, but thank you, Ms. Mitchell. In the um, board docs, there's a letter that states the title says uh, "Sample County Attorney Letter." Is uh, my question is is that are we? Because that letter doesn't really fit some of the things that we're told, mm -hmm. we're not suggesting that you have to use that letter, right? No, Mr. Schlegel provided that letter just as a sample. We do not have to follow that letter. It's not a form letter that's required by DNR. Okay. So that was just one example. Okay, thank you. Commissioner okay. Cole? So, I'm sorry. Or did you, did you have you anything? No, because it, okay. it's a few things in there, but one of the things that, um, that I noticed based on the, um, the testimony is that in this letter, it says that, that what's going to be used is a suppressed center fire rifle. So I just wanted to make sure that this is not just a form letter that we would use, that it would be, it would be drafted based on our approval today and our discussions today. So that's what I just wanted to verify. That was just a letter to uh, use as a template mm -hmm. from, from DNR, supplied us from DNR, a redacted letter that was uh, issued by a county attorney in another county. Mm -hmm. Now. With the letter that goes to DNR, and I think it was in the body of the email that mm -hmm. I sent in, there's very specific language that DNR insists must be there. The two points of which are that the operation will be conducted uh, during nighttime hours and that we will be using rifles, 
And those those are the specifics that must be in the letter. And then once you know once that operational plan goes up, it lays in DNR for 30 days, of which they review everything. They review the operational plans. They 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 review everything that's done before they make the determination and issue out um, issue out the permits. Just to clarify, so that if we put what Commissioner Rucci asked for in the in the letter as far as uh, public meeting uh, after we sign off on it, that we want public meetings or public uh, the ability for the public to comment and have a talk about it, that's not going to mix up your uh, your um, your letter, correct? Because I believe that's what we're proposing to put in the, le in the letter, I correct? Just, I just asked for public notice. Public notice. So the public notice, putting the public notice in there would be uh, wouldn't mess up what you're trying to do with the letter, correct? I have no clue. It's it's above and beyond. No, no, no. The letter goes. At, no, he gets his letter. We just send out public notice okay. when he's sh what what time he's shooting at. Okay. Right. That's, All right. That's what Commissioner what Code said she wanted to. Can do I? That. So, Mr. Schlegel, I, I fully understand and I and I grasp what's going on here. Um, again, I mean, I can't keep a garden in my in my at my house, so I got it. Um, so I, yours is of course much more grandiose than than my little garden. Um, but I do, only thing I have is just some safety concerns, and you, you have discussed a lot of those um, things in place for safety concerns. Now, the only other concern I have, and, and I, I hone in on the, on the night shooting again, is that if a sheriff is called out and he enters those woods, what precaution does he have that he can enter those woods because there's some shooting going around in the neighborhood, someone here is shooting. So I, I, I yep. want to also hear from the sheriff and see what they would do and when they get called out, if they ever get called out for something like this, what kind of action would you take? And then, Mr. Slake, if you can tell me if there are some safety measures put in place for the, for the community, surrounding community. And so I, I, I understand that there are some things, but I need some, some great details that this is going to be off, safe. I would never want him, and he'd have no reason to enter the woods. As we, if this works, as this moves forward, this this map that we're looking at mm -hmm. would be sitting in their in their office and that they know that I'm going to be right here. You've got two sites and it would be I'm here. We're going to conduct an operation at site A today. OK, tonight. Right. They know if their officer comes, he goes there. He's got the map. He knows where we are. He knows where to find us. In addition, you know, as we went through the process and to, to do our proficiency, um, which there, there's no law against discharging mm -hmm. a, a firearm at okay. nighttime in, in Charles County. Yeah. So we did have to do, and our proficiency was done at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And we did call the Sheriff's Department, the non-emergency line, and we notified to them, we will be shooting tonight. And nobody showed up, no calls came in so this is not your first time, time the the windows are closed the doors are closed people are hunkered down it's not like it's the middle of the the middle of the summer i don't think you'll get as quite as many right. calls as you think it could happen but like i say they'll know yeah. law enforcement in the county will know right i can tell you that that they get calls um because they showed up, showed up at my house. I'm like, I'm not shooting guns. So, so they do get called even for it because it's, not, it's very unusual for someone probably in, in that vicinity to be shooting guns in the middle of the night. So they're gonna, it's going to startle. But I, I am curious about the sheriff and your position on safety concerns because they did enter the woods. I will tell you when, when they did come, I was like, I, I'm not shooting guns. And I said, it's around the perimeter. So they did go around the perimeter of the wood line. So I do want to know, ask your concerns, or do you have any concerns or safety concerns? If you ever have to um, if, respond if to. If the, the prior knowledge that there's an operation going on, there would, and I concur, there would be absolutely no reason for us okay. to enter okay. the woods, barring okay. any other unforeseen things. Okay. Uh, and let's say, moving forward, uh -huh. I, I welcome an on-site visit. Whoever your person is, they want to come out and see. This is this is where we are. This is where it's. This is where we're doing the operation and exactly what's happening, right. so that so that your officers know that they're not in a dangerous position. I, I, and I appreciate that because the community would also know. So if you have to respond to the community, you would know that there's something going on in the area. 
So I, I agree with that public notice that I think the community should be re really aware of what's going on. Are there uh, further comments by any commissioners? Because I'd like to uh, kind of wrap this up. Um, I, I think that we've heard sufficient uh, testimony from Mr. Slagle. I, in reading uh, the letter from the uh, sheriff's office, I, you know, I saw it more or less as a disclaimer more than anything else. I didn't read it as something which was suggesting that um, the sheriff's office was opposed to it. I think the sheriff's office just wanted to make it clear that it couldn't guarantee you know, that, you know, the possibility that no incidents at all could possibly occur. That's the way I read the letter. Um, so with that in mind, you know, I know that um, Commissioner Rucci had put on the table a motion, but I just wanted to make sure that motion also included. Mr. Collins, uh, the county clerk will be able to summarize okay. that motion all right. so that you'll have it in full. So uh, please, I'm... If there's, if you're prepared, I'd like the summary of what that motion would include at this. All right, if I um, understand Commissioner Rucci, your motion would be to approve having the county attorney send a letter for support um, for the request for this permit. And in addition to that, once the letter is sent, that um, public notice would be given whenever Mr. Schlegel would actually do the firearm or the shooting at night. Is that correct, Commissioner Ritchie? Mr. Soto, I believe, Commissioner. Uh, not, one more correction. Oh. Not, no, just from what time the season starts to the season ends. The the okay. And then notice, then, then he has notice he has to do anyway by DNR. Okay. That's, that's his, his guideline. Just okay. basically when it's starting from January to whatever, or March to whatever it is, you know, okay. at the end of the season. Just one notice that it's going to be from doing what he does from this time to this time. Okay. For clarification. How would that take place? Does the burden of that notice rest on me? No, it's no. the burden is on the county. Okay. It would be for the county. Could I ask for clarification? On the motion, Commissioner Rucci, you were not including information about the notice to be included in the letter. That was a separate Correct. part that you want subsequent to you all approving the letter. Okay, and in addition to the information to be provided that Mr. Schlegel indicated has to be there, which is the nighttime hours and the use of the rifle, Commissioner Stewart, I think, was also requesting information to be included about the proper training of the shooters, that the commissioners were approving this based on, in part, the information about the training of your shooters, and that needed to be included in the letter. And I'm also re requesting the, the names of the, the three shooters. To be included in to the be letter. Included. Which I believe is a part of your operational plan, but that we'll make sure to also include it in the letter. The, right. the, shooters, mm -hmm. the shooters are named mm -hmm. and have their background checks and proficiency, and will they, they'll, they'll, we'll all be listed in the operational okay, plan. Okay, but just so that we're all on the same page, we'll be very explicit about it and put it in the letter as well. Right. Doesn't hurt anything. So. Um, I appreciate, Ms. DeSoto, you're reading the, um, going through the uh, motion, but I think we need to be intentional about the public notice and the timeline. And I would say um, we need to put days in, like um, two weeks prior to the on start of the, so 14, um, let's say 10 business days before, and then the notice is published weekly through the time period that the operations will be ongoing. So I kindly ask for that to be intentionally added into the motion about when the public notice must occur. 10 days, 10 business days before, and at least once weekly during the operation. So for the months of February and March, it would be ongoing. Correct. Right. I don't have a problem. The county will be putting that in, correct? Right. right. That's, yep. fine. right. That's, That's our us. responsibility. Exactly. Okay. Any additions? So do we need to hear the summary again? Okay. Um, the motion um, from Commissioner Rucci was that the letter of support for the permit request, um, which would f 
for the county attorney to um, draft would have include the nighttime hours, the proper training um, included in the names of the shooters as part of the permit process. In addition, that the county would give um, public notice um, of the time frame of the shooting to take place, but 10 days prior, um, they would publish specifically when this would take place in the evenings and to publish it weekly during the full operation, during the two months of operation. Can we also, can That's you know second. the conclusion of it? I mean, that the actually, is it going to be at the end of the month? Or, I mean, can we know what, when it ends and the, the public know that it's also ended with the notification? Okay, yes, during okay. the, yeah, we can end. Okay put in there um, in addition to that when it would actually end. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yes. We need a second. So that is I make the second. So again, could you just for review so we know what we're voting on? All right, the motion, the full motion or just, Please. okay. The full motion would be the motion that the letter of support um, would be drafted by the county attorney in support of the um, permit request. And it will include the letter, the nighttime hours, the proper training um, of the shooters and the names of the shooters. In addition, the county will provide public notice of the actual two months dates of the, sh of the shooting, planned shooting, and 10 days prior to that, the notice will go out and it will be published weekly thereafter and also include an end date for the operation. I need to interject procedurally. Technically, Ms. Mitchell, we have a motion and a second already on the floor. Um, it was previously, a motion was previously stated by Commissioner Rucci in second. Can we procedurally correct that and bring that back so we can move forward with what Mr. Soto said? Commissioner Rucci, can we have a motion to withdraw your motion? Just withdraw your motion, yes. your original motion. That's fine. And you withdrew your second. Can I'll you withdraw, withdraw your second? second? Okay. And so I move to move um, Mr. Soto's motion. And I'll second. Well, no, it's Commissioner Rucci's motion. Oh, okay. Let's, let's start with motion again. Your original is removed. Just with the changes. Yeah, see, he wants to hear it with the changes once more. Okay. So that he can move it and then second it. So just read it through and then they'll do it again. Okay, read the motion. Yes, so he can hear it. And then they're gonna okay, move but it. you yeah. removed the original motion. Yes, you yes. Okay, yes. just making clarify. Okay, there's a motion from Commissioner Rucci that the letter of support for the permit process for um, Mr. Schlegel um, that the county attorney is directed to write the letter of support. Wait a minute, can I start again? <laughs> Sorry. The motion is from Commissioner Rushi that a letter of support will be written by the county attorney in support of the permit request from Mr. Schlegel for nighttime, uh, which will include nighttime hours of operation, will include the time frame of the operation, and will also include proper training um, was provided um, that the shooters have proper training and the actual names of the shooters. In addition to the letter of support being written, the county will give notice when this operation will take place, including the start and end date, and will county will give 10 days notice prior to the actual start date and will send notice weekly to um, let the residents know of this operation. Okay. So the motion so moved. is the second? Second. Is there any unreadiness? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the ayes have it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.